Hi Chemistry, this is KJ here, Lesson 2.10, Separating Solutions. Separating Solutions. Mixtures can be separated in a number of ways. Every day you probably use solutions that have been separated. A morning cup of coffee or tea, orange juice for a snack, filtered water in your cup, and the gasoline that the car uses are examples of solutions that have been separated. This lesson will look at how these and other solutions can be separated. Mixtures can be separated by physical means. So physical versus chemical. Remember, chemically changing something means you create a new substance. Physically separating something basically means you pick apart the pieces. You can do that by filtration, distillation, chromatography. Goals for this lesson, describe the process of distillation, explain how distillation, the application and removal of heat, is used to purify a compound by separating it into component parts, describe other methods of separating solutions. And then of course on slide two is your student guide that you can download and use if you choose to. Screen three, sorry that jumped around there. Let's look at the picture. Knives, forks, and spoons are easy to sort and organize. Solutions are mixtures that might be difficult to separate. If you dump kitchen utensils on a table, you can separate the spoons from the forks and the forks from the knives. The separation of such a mixture, a pile of utensils, is easy enough to accomplish. But not all mixtures are that easy to separate. Mixtures in the form of solutions, where one or more things are dissolved in a solvent, are more difficult to separate. This lesson provides a look at some of the ways in which a solution can be separated. Some methods are easier than others, and some methods work only for certain types of solutions. Okay, so from the study guide, I just copy-pasted the top part, which was our introduction paragraph, our goals, and our keywords and pronunciation. We have distillation, physically separating a solution of a solid and a liquid by boiling off the liquid, fractionation, the process for the separation of mixtures containing several liquids used most often for separation of fossil fuels, so like gasoline and oil, osmosis, I love how it's right now, you're like, ah, uh, moses. The diffusion of water across a semi-permeable membrane, semi meaning half or some, permeable meaning it can go through, so some things can go across the membrane. Diffusion, of course, means the movement without extra energy from high concentrations to low concentrations. Just like from a previous test, why we could smell the cookies baking in your kitchen as soon as you walked in the front door because of osmosis or diffusion, because of that diffusion, osmosis is specifically the diffusion of water. And then from the last slide, I just copy pasted the sentence, mixtures in the form of solutions, and then a reminder about what solutions are, where one or more things are dissolved in a solvent, are more difficult to separate. Distillation is one way to separate the components of a homogeneous mixture. So distillation, physically separating a solution of a solid and a liquid by boiling off the liquid. Distillation is a process that can separate liquids in a mixture. It takes into account the differences in boiling points for two liquids. Okay, so I kind of want to pause here because the definition that they used is, okay, if you have salt dissolved into water, if you boil all the water away, what's left over? The salt is left over in your pan. However, I'm kind of surprised that's all they included in the definition because most of the time when you hear of distil distillation, um, you're separating liquids. And it's because different liquids boil at different points. So remember one of the Unit 2 labs talked about what temperature do different things boil at. And water boiled at 100 degrees Celsius and alcohol boiled at 78 degrees Celsius. So different liquids boil at different temperatures. So basically what they do is they put water and alcohol in the same flask here and they boil it. And which one boils first, the alcohol or the water? The alcohol does. So the alcohol turns into a gas. It goes down this condensing tube, which has cold water. So the gaseous alcohol turns into liquid alcohol again and it drips into this flask and you can collect it. And then it will stop because then the temperature is like 80, 85, 90, 95, 100 degrees. And at 100 degrees, what happens to the water? It starts to boil. It runs down the condensing 
tube, it turns back into a liquid, you get a different flask, and you can collect the water. Okay, so I made a second definition for distillation, and I just copy-pasted process that can separate liquids in a mixture. It takes into account the differences in boiling points for two liquids. So then I just wrote about what I just talked about. Water and alcohol are in a mixture together. The mixture is heated until the alcohol starts to boil at 78 degrees Celsius. The now gaseous alcohol runs down the cold tube, changes back into liquid alcohol, and is collected in the flask. By 79 degrees, all the alcohol is boiled off. Because remember, during a phase change, the temperature does not change. On our phase change graphs, we saw a flat line showing that it takes time and it takes heat energy, heat energy to break those bonds apart, but the temperature stays constant during a phase change. So by 79 degrees, all the alcohol is boiled off. The mixture then continues to heat until the water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. The water turns into steam, run down the cooling tube, and is collected in the flask. All right, so let's keep reading their paragraph. For example, assume that you have a mixture made of two different liquids and you place it over a burner. The liquid with the lower boiling point will boil first and will therefore turn into a gas first. If this gas is captured and then condensed back into a liquid in another container, then the two liquids have been separated. So again, the alcohol boils off first, it goes in this tube, it cools off, it drips into here. When you hit 79 degrees, you have all pure alcohol in here, all pure water in there. It's kind of cool. This kind of separation is the principle behind an apparatus called a still, which is used to separate alcohol from water and to make certain alcoholic beverages, which of course we are not telling you to consume or anything like that. And in the lab, when I'm talking about alcohol, I'm talking about isopropyl alcohol, like rubbing alcohol that you use to disinfect. View the animation to see how water can be purified using a distillation apparatus. All right, so here is our apparatus. So here we have it, the mixture on a heat source, and there we go. I'm going to turn on closed captioning just in case the sound wasn't working for you. So in this case, they looks like they started with a solid and a liquid. So for example, like salt and water. So the liquid was the water, and it boiled and turned into a gas. So you've probably seen distilled water in the grocery store, and that's what it is. All right. Chromatography is another method to separate a solution. So hopefully you remember chromatography from one of our previous labs. And let's look at the picture first this time. So remind you about it. Okay, so this is a little bit different setup, but it's the same idea we're separating out black ink. So remember from the other lab, you had black and red and green markers, and then we ran, um, we put them on a piece of chromatography paper, and then we ran the water up, and it separated the ink into different colors. And if it separated into different colors, that meant it was a mixture. So this is another way to do that.
So the way that we did it was we just separated and said, okay, the black ink is made out of green, red, and blue ink. But here, they're actually collecting the different dyes. So it's kind of a more advanced way of doing chromatography. And so again, they're collecting the water in between the two colors because they just want the pure colors. So chromatography is another method to separate a solution. Chromatography is the process by which a mixture is separated by being allowed to flow along some stationary substance. So before in the lab, we did it on paper. Here, they did it through a column, like a sand column. For example, it is possible to separate the pigments in an ink solution by passing the ink along a piece of paper. The paper is the stationary phase. In other words, it's the part that doesn't move. That's what stationary means. The ink is carried up the paper by a solvent, such as water, that is in the mobile phase. It's called mobile phase because it moves. Because the pigments have different physical properties, they have different affinities to the solution they are dissolved in and to the paper they are traveling on. So basically affinities meaning they might go faster, slower, they might be more attracted or not attracted depending on the type of molecule they are. The pigments travel down the paper at different rates, separating from each other. Some substances can be separated by gas chromatography. Blood or urine is sometimes tested in this way to check for steroids or other performance enhancing drugs in an athlete's body. The blood or urine sample is turned into a gas and then mixed with helium or some other inert gas. The new gas mixture is passed through a column to separate it. The mixture is separated into components which are then identified to determine the substances in the athlete's body. I bet you had no idea how they did that. I added to our notes, chromatography is the process by which a mixture is separated by being allowed to flow along some stationary phase, such as paper or a column. Different components of a mixture travel at different speeds, which allow them to be collected one at a time. Example, black marker ink on paper or in a column separates into blue, red, and green. Another example, blood or urine is turned into gas to test for drugs by using gas chromatography. All right, the next way to separate a mixture is fractionation. Fractionation is a process for the separation of a mixture containing several liquids used most often for separation of fossil fuels. The process of fractionation has many practical uses. Fractionation or fractional distillation separates components of a mixture using their distinct boiling points. This process can separate many parts of one mixture. In fractionation, the solution is boiled and the vapor enters a tall tower, which is typically warm at the bottom and cool at the top. Products with different boiling points condense at different levels of the tower. The components with higher boiling points condense at the lower levels and are collected there. The ones with lower boiling points are collected higher in the tower where the temperature is lower. Remember that the boiling point and the condensation point are at exactly the same temperature. So water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and it condenses at 100 degrees Celsius. And we'll continue on with fractionation in part two of the video.